Hello, and welcome to the Mechanism Tutorial. Today I'll be covering the Mechanism Fusion Reactor, the most powerful mechanism generator. Before we begin, I'd first like to say this video is going to be long. It's a really expensive and long process to get your reactor up. And the second thing is, I've started filming on the 1.12.2 version of Mechanism on our new mod pack. The older videos are still going to be relevant, but there's a few details that have changed that will update accordingly on those videos. Now on to the video! Let's go ahead and get started with making some deuterium. That's going to be the first of the two fuels we'll need for a reactor. It's going to be pretty simple to make. It's going to involve an electric pump, a special new upgrade, and an electrolyzer. The special new upgrade is called the filter upgrade, and it's probably the cheapest thing we're going to cover today. It's going to involve some tin instead of the iron or gold that we normally use, and it's going to be made like any other upgrade, so there's some alloy and some glass. So just insert it into, react into your pump like you would with any other upgrade, and you're set to go. So I put some speed and energy upgrades in here earlier because it was running pretty slow. So go ahead and upgrade. So go ahead and extract the uh, heavy water, some pipes, and insert it in your electrolyzer. And it, I should mention, it is going to make a heavy water a lot slower than it would water. I think it's like a 10 to 1 ratio. Instead of, um, so you'll make 1,000 water, you'll make 100 of uh, heavy water. So be mindful of that. So go ahead and insert it into your electrolyzer. It's going to go ahead and split that into deuterium and oxygen. We start it up and... Believe me, this thing is super loud now with uh, 1.12. So, uh, deuterium is one of the fuels we're actually going to need reactor, so we can stop there. We can go ahead and put it into a gas tank. And oxygen is used in other, a bunch of other processes, as we know, including the production of HBPE. We'll go ahead and use HDPE to make the machine that allows us to collect tritium in the other fuel we'll need. So, let's go ahead and take a look at HPE production now. HPP production is a little lengthy, but it's nothing super complicated. We're first going to start with some biofuel, which is something we can make in a crusher with saplings, seeds, or any of those organic materials. So we're going to put some in there. It's going to make that one sapling for uh, two biofuel. So we'll go ahead and grab some of that. We're going to go ahead and insert it into a new machine called the Pressurized Reaction Chamber. It's a little pricey. It's going to involve some steel, some enriched alloy, an enrichment chamber, two basic control circuits, two basic tack tanks, and a dynamic tank. So I would go ahead and make two of these PRCs, that way we can have two, because it will take two to actually make HBPE. So, the first machine we're going to have, it's going to involve, it's going to have some water, it's going to have a little bit of hydrogen, which I have here. And you're going to go ahead and put your biofuel in here, and it will be transformed into substrate, along with a new gas called ethylene. So the new substrate can be pumped directly into our second PRC, but we'll need to make... A, uh, we'll need to convert that ethylene gas into a liquid using a rotary condensatrator. So go ahead and put that on there and it's going to make liquid ethylene. So go ahead and put the liquid ethylene in there along with, with oxygen and that will turn a substrate into HBE pellets. It'll also make a little bit of hydrogen, as, or, I'm sorry, oxygen. It's a byproduct which you can use anything else. It's going to be less than uh, the oxygen you need to start with. So we'll get our pellets out. So this has a couple of certain uses, but our primary use for HBPE is to make it into sheets for the no solar neutron activator, which we'll talk about soon. So you've got two options for making sheets. You can use eight pellets to make one sheet track of taffy normally, or you can use three of them to make a sheet in enrichment chamber. Now, if you're wanting to use the enrichment chamber, be careful about automating it because you might have to make a separate enricher line if you plan on uh, using auto sort for your main ones because you need exactly three to make a sheet. So like if you put a stack of 64 and an auto assort, it would mess up and your whole system would be messed up. So now that we make sheets, we can go ahead and discuss tritium production. Tritium production is a little more involved than deuterium production, but thankfully it only involves one new machine. Well, first, you need to make brine from a thermal evaporation tower, which we learned about when we uh, learned to quadruple our ores, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it up in the uh, top right corner of your screen. So go ahead and pump out your brine into another thermal evaporation tower to make lithium liquid. Go ahead and hang on to a little bit of this lithium for now. It's going to be important in another mechanism feature, but today we'll need to use it for tritium. We'll need another rotary concentrator as we'll need to convert it into lithium gas to make lithium gas. To, I'm sorry, make it tritium gas. So go ahead and pump your lithium gas into the new solar neutron activator. The recipe is a little pricey. It's going to involve that uh, HVP sheet we talked about earlier. So I'm going to reach alloy, some uh, elite circuits, steel casing, and some bronze ingots. The re These require no power to run, but they do not function in the rain at night. So we can go ahead and turn it to rain. They'll stop working here. And new to the... Uh, New to 1.12.2 is the ability to upgrade them actually, so if you put some speed upgrades in here, they will speed up. You don't need to use any energy upgrades on these guys, because they uh, they don't use energy at all, so don't worry about making those. So now that we have tritium being made, there's just one more thing we need to cover before we get started with our reactor construction. Go ahead and make a chemical infuser and put some deuterium and your tritium gas in there to make DT fuel. 
You won't need to make this for the reactor fuel, as the reactor will do this on its own as it operates, but we do need to have it available to fuel our holorum, which is one of the catalysts for the startup of our reactor. An empty one can be made by infusing some gold dust, actually, uh, four gold dust to be exact, with some uh, carbon. So we'll go ahead and stick that in there. I already have some carbon in there earlier, we'll let that run. So whenever we go ahead and stick this holorum into the chemical infuser, it's going to take like a tiny amount of DT fuel, just like 10. So we'll go ahead and stick it over here. Here we are, and it is ready for reaction. So whenever we have the uh, reactor ready to start up, we'll go ahead and put that in there. And it will act as the catalyst to start up our reactor. So now that we have that covered, let's go ahead and build our reactor. The construction of your fusion reactor resembles a star with a hollow center. The first layer consists of frames arranged like a star, with the second layer making a frame around it with no corners. The center of these frames can be reactor ports or reactor glass. The third layer is the same thing, but this time we're going to add corners. And you can place reactor ports anywhere but the corners, as well as reactor glass. But you'll need to have your laser, laser focus matrix on this layer, it must be placed in the center block. But you can place uh, it on um, any side here. The fourth layer is exactly like your second one, with the same rules and all, you can have ports and glass in the centers. And the fifth and final layer will resemble your first one with the only exception being to place the uh, controller here. That way you can actually complete your multi-block. The characteristic redstone particles should flash when you have properly built your fusion reactor. The final thing we'll need to build is our laser charger. The aptly named laser can be made with three reinforced alloys, some energy tablets, a steel casing, and a diamond. Go ahead and make some, a few laser amplifiers as well with steel, a basic energy blood cell, and a diamond. So when charged, this thing is going to constantly emit, well, a laser. You can funnel this into your fusion reactor, but it will not generate enough heat to actually activate the reactor. So a couple of notes on the laser as well. It can do damage to players, fire damage in fact, so it, um, it can kill you, but so be careful about it. And it can travel up to 64 blocks. So I would actually recommend funneling these things into a laser amplifier block. So these can hold a laser charge, like here. And it will, uh, that way you can funnel it and you can eventually tell it to discharge it all at once. You can chain the amplifiers together to charge one final amplifier with the energy needed to activate reactor. It will take a lot of energy to act activate reactor. So you may end up waiting a long time or building several lasers to get the charges necessary to act activate your reactor. You will need about one GRF to activate it, to actually generate a meaningful amount of heat to activate the reactors. You can see this little setup's charging really slowly, so you may want to build a bigger one. So whenever you actually have the charge ready, you can set, you can pull the lever like I can. I set mine to high, or you can set a minimum here that will allow you to uh, fire the reactor, fire the laser as soon as it's ready. The time has come. We have the necessary laser charge to activate the reactor. If you haven't already, go ahead and connect your fuel lines to the reactor. You can put your ones on here on the green side, so I have mine on opposite sides here. Go ahead and open up your reactor controller and head to the fuel tab here. Go ahead and set your injection rate here to 2. Now, the injection rate influences how much fuel your reactor will use to make power. The higher the rate, the more fuel the reactor will consume, the more powerful power it will make. An injection rate of 2 will use 2 millibuckets of deuterium and tritium a tick and will produce 160,000 RF per tick. So go ahead and insert your full hologram in the center here. And once we're ready to uh, start it up, we'll go ahead and fire the laser. We can see here it automatically starts here. It's got a really neat animation here. We can see that it's got lots of heat now. It's going to slowly dwindle down, but it should say stay uh, roughly self-sufficient. It's going to make a lot of power here. In fact, it's going to run it's going to run out of room eventually. So, it's only going to need a laser charge every once in a while, so I would actually recommend charging your laser setup with the reactor itself. Go ahead and set that uh, amp the delay here to a certain amount, that way it can keep itself going. So, whenever you're actually ready to output power, you can go ahead and slap a uh, port here with your configurator, and it will change, or I'm sorry, shift click there, and it will uh, put on output mode. So, in conclusion, the fusion reactor is a clean source of power that just feels largely for free, but it is a difficult road to produce. This amount of power begs the question. How exactly do we store all of it? An ultimate power cell won't cut it at all. We'll need something way bigger. That means the next video we're going to cover the induction cell, a new multi-block dedicated to storing power in the remaining mechanism generators. But for now, enjoy your power surplus. Thanks for watching my latest tutorial. Be sure to check out my other videos as well. I make some fun reviews and skits on here in addition to gameplay. And be sure to leave a like in the, if you enjoyed the video, and let me know in the comments what you liked and maybe didn't like. 
Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated on when I post new videos. I'll see you all in the next video and have a great day.